All right, so we're going to get started. Um, today, we switch from, uh, from InDesign into Adobe Illustrator, though I think you'll find the transition between InDesign and Illustrator to be very similar or very, very close together. So it's not going to be too big of a jump. And a lot of you were already asking me for a lot of the things that you're going to be learning in the next day or so. Um, so we're going to spend today really investigating the pen tool and learning to work with the pen tool. It is one of those tools that you just need to learn. And the only way to learn it is to do a lot of practice with it. And because of that, we're going to do a lot of practice with it. So what we're working on today will take place over two days. So you'll post whatever you get done today, and then you'll come back on uh, next week, and you'll do the next half of it. Um, and so you kind of pace yourself. If you get a bunch of it done today, there's a lot less that you have to do next class. But I give you two class days. The more time you spend working on it, the more comfortable you'll be with the pen tool, and the easier your life will be down the road. If you struggle with the pen tool, keep practicing, because you really need to get this skill down uh, and be comfortable with it. So for, uh, for today's exercise, we are going to go through and make a, make a font, essentially. We're going to create all of the characters of the alphabet uh, and all of the numbers, and through that process, learn a lot about the pen tool and how it works. Um, I will also, of course, introduce Illustrator as a program. We'll, we'll walk through that so you can see what's going on in Illustrator. But like I said, it's very similar to InDesign. Actually, before InDesign came into existence, um, most of the layout work that was done, like if you were doing a layout or a poster or something, you just do it in Illustrator. So InDesign kind of took a chunk out of Illustrator and became its own program. Um, but they're, they're much similar than, say, Photoshop and either one of them. So you'll see that crossover in a little bit. Um, looks like I forgot to change the date here. It's changed on your handout, but not on the online thing. Um, at the bottom of the, today's exercise page, exercise 113, there's actually an Illustrator template that you're going to use for this. So you'll want to make sure that you download that template. If you click on it, it will, it will download, and then you'll be able to open it from there. Make sure that once it's open, you do a save as and place it on your flash drive, or, either, or place it on your flash drive first and then open it, one or the other. But you want to make sure it gets off the, uh, the computer. Oh, no, I forgot to do something to it. This is what happens when you rush. So conveniently, the, uh, the templates aren't going to be there. So you know what? Pause for just a second. I'll come back in like three to five minutes, and I'll update this template, and then you can download it again, because it's not going to do any good without the pieces that I needed. So bear with me for just a second, and I'll update it, and then you can download it. OK, so there we go. It's all fixed. I apologize for that. Um, it, it happens. Everybody makes mistakes, right? So if you, uh, if you went to the course website, do a refresh on this particular page. You can click the address bar and hit uh, Enter and reload the page. You can press Control-R to reload the page. And at the bottom, you'll download this Illustrator template again. When you download that template, it should, when you open it, look like this. It should have background information uh, behind those lines and guides. Uh, the reason that the background information is there is so that you can use that obviously, and figure out what, what characters go on what spaces and, and that sort of thing. Um, so let me go ahead and, and start by walking through Illustrator and what's going on uh, in the setup of Illustrator. Currently, I'm in the Essentials workspace. So just like we have in InDesign, we have Essentials, and then we have Typography. We, have or we don't have Advanced anymore, but it, it's a lot of the same stuff that you'll see. But in, in um, in for our world, all we really need right now is just the essentials, so that's fine. Across the top here, we have our normal file menu structure. Most of the commands are available in there. You'll want to pay particular attention to the object menu. A lot of things that you'll need to do are related to object. And then select also has some nice little uh, bonus things that I'll, I'll show you a little bit later on in there. We have a contextual ribbon that changes based on what tool you have selected. So for example, if I were to pick the pen tool, which is what we're using today, um, the, the ribbon changes. It's different if I pick, say, the, let's see what, the crop tool, for example. It's going to change, or the artboard tool. So we're going to be working in the pen tool today, primarily, so not much that we have to worry about. Down the left side here, we have all our standard tools. There are shortcuts for a lot of these tools. If you hover your mouse over them, you can see in parentheses what the uh, keyboard shortcut is to get to that particular tool. 
I will not use any of those keyboard shortcuts for the sake of clarity in terms of what I'm doing and what I'm clicking on so that you don't get confused uh, because you can't see me press a keyboard shortcut. The only ones that I'm going to be using are the primarily the space bar when I pan around to see different things. Um, and um, that's about it. So most of the time I'll be picking over here on my tools themselves. If we come all the way down to the very bottom, we do have two different color options that are available here. Much like the world of InDesign, we have a stroke color or an outline color, and we also have a fill color, which is what is filling in our particular shape. For today's purposes, we're going to work with just the stroke color. It needs to be black, which it currently is. But the fill color, if I click on the fill color here, I want that to be transparent. So I'll click the little button below it that has a red slash in it to make that transparent. If you don't have that as transparent, when you start to make the shape, it will be filling in part of it with white, and you won't be able to see what you're trying to do. So uh, that'll save you a little bit of work if you preset that right now. On the right side, we have our little menus that pop up. Um, for today's purposes, we're going to be using the stroke menu, which is right here. One of the things that's important to point out, though, with uh, Illustrator is that many times you get just a small menu. And a lot of times when I'm going, I've already expanded these menus, so they'll stay expanded. But when you first click on stroke, you might see this, which just gives you a weight. If you want more options, there's a little flyout menu that's a, a triangle and four lines. If you click on that, you can click on show options, which will give you the full panel, which is what you want to see. The same thing happens for some of the other tools as well. Sometimes they have smaller, uh, yeah. You might get, like in the gradient tool, for example, you get just the gradient. And you can click Show Options to get more options relating to it. So it's just important that you recognize that there is more options many times as part of it. So we're going to be working with the Stroke menu. And we're also going to be working with the Pen tool today, which is available here. But before we get into that, I want to take a quick look at the layers and what we're, what we're working on today. So in my layers, I have a, a setup. And like I said, I, I preset this up for you. What I want you to do is I want you to turn off page two. And I'm going to make sure that font page one right here is highlighted in that bluish color, which is going to be the first page that I'm working for or working on. And now if I come over here and I start to look at this, you see that I have a background image. That background image is locked. And in each one of these regions, and actually, it's probably easiest if we started with the letter A. I'll start with the letter A here. We have a cap height, or the maximum height here. We have an X height. We have a baseline. And we have a maximum descender, which is how far it goes down. These are based on their template. Um, we're going to use a website called Calligrapher that will create a font out of what we're creating. It's free. Um, you, they, every, every semester, this website changes. So somebody buys somebody else and, and assumes somebody else. So we have to kind of make it work with whatever's reasonably free for you guys. Uh, in this particular iteration of it, um, it's, uh, the website is Calligrapher. We're going to upload these two files. We are limited to 75 characters, so we can't do any more than that. So what I have set up for you here doesn't exceed that maximum number, so you're, you can do it for free. They, offer paid services so that you could create your own font that's a little bit more advanced and, and that sort of thing. All that you're required to do is just what we're doing here, nothing more. And um, the end result is never that great. But again, it's not about having the best font in the world. It's about practicing using the pen tool and understanding how the pen tool works. The reason that I do this with, with the letter forms is there's so many different things that you have to do to create the letters that you start to become very, very comfortable with the pen tool. So there's a reason that I'm making you do this. And um, that is for the pen tool practice. So I'm going to start with the A and work my way through the alphabet. There are some numbers and special characters that are hidden up here. But the A's, A is a pretty good place to start. I'm going to be making sure that I'm working on the font page one. I'm going to make sure that page one is on and it's locked, which it should be by default. And then I'll go ahead and close off that uh, layers window so we're not seeing that anymore. And now I'm going to go ahead and start to actually draw my letters. And so remember, we're going to start on the baseline here as we start to create letters. I'm creating a capital A. I'm going to use the pen tool, which is available right here. It looks like an old school ink pen. Yeah. The asterisk, where? 
oh, that's just that it says I'm creating a new line. It'll change. That, that little asterisk will change depending on what I'm doing. And I'll show you as we go forward. So I'm starting with a brand new A. And as I start to create this, remember I'm creating a capital letter, so it should go up to the cap height. And I'll start, say, maybe here. I'm going to single click, which is going to start my pen tool process. I'm going to come up to the top here, and I'll single click. Now, because I went with a single click and a single click, this is going to be a straight line between those two points. As I come back down on the other side, I want to do a single click on this side. So I'll come down here, and I'll do a single click. And it should snap down to the same line, which is good. Now, if I look at this A, and I can zoom in a little bit more, it's really not quite symmetrical. It's leaning a little bit to one side. So this is one of the standard things that you're going to end up doing over and over again with the pen tool. It's part of getting uh, practice with it. And that is that you're going to come up and use the white arrow, which is called the, direction, the direct selection tool, which allows you essentially to select a control point that represents the curve. So if I select this direct selection tool, I click on the point in the center here, I can then move this point without moving the other two points. So I'm not moving the whole object, I'm just moving this one point. And I'll move it over a little bit, and now it's nicely centered on that object. So then I need to create the little cross that goes across the bottom here. I'll come in with my pen tool and I'll go ahead and start to draw this line across. Now, there's a fundamental problem when I try to do this, and that is that when I hover my mouse over this existing line here, it's going to have a tendency to create another point on that line. So sometimes, well, in this case, it did it for me, sometimes you have to be close to it, but not quite on top of the line. And I'll go back and show you in a few more places as we go through. So what I've done is I've drawn a line, I've drawn the top of the A, I've drawn the line across the A. I've placed it wherever I feel it's appropriate. If I went all the way to the X height, it would look a little funny. So I've dropped it down a little bit more. Um, we could drop it even a little bit more. And I could stretch it out there and there, depending on the look of the particular font that I was going for. Does that make sense so far? Now, this line is awfully thin right now. And I'd like to fatten that up just a little bit. And so what I'll do is I'll select these two. There's two pieces. There's the top of the A, and there's the line across the A. And I'll come over to my stroke window, which is available over here. It's the three lines. And I'm going to change the weight so that the weight goes up. So I'm at three, maybe four, five, something like that, depending on the, the weight that I want. I'm going to try to be consistent as I go through the letters. This seems about right for my weight so far. But I also have some options that are relating to this particular uh, shape. So if, for example, I use my direct select tool and I select just that top point here, we can come over under my stroke menu and we can choose how a corner is shown. So right now it's a sharp corner, so I get a point. I can clip off the corner, or excuse me, that's rounded the corner, so I can make the corner rounded at the top. I can also make it so that it's clipped off, so it's straight. I can do the same thing on the ends, so down here. So I can choose to have them end at the line. I can choose to have them rounded over. Or I can choose to have them extend past the line, depending on your purpose. One of the things that people do ask frequently, however, is how do I make the bottoms flush with the baseline? And unfortunately, there's no easy way of doing that other than covering it up with like a white square. So in that case, I would go to a white square. I'd change my, oops, let me go ahead and just draw it. Draw it there. Sorry, this, I lost my five point weight. There we go, let's extend that out, perfect. I'll take this object and I'm gonna fill it with white and that makes them even at the bottom. Unfortunately, there's no real other way around it. The good news is when we export it, it'll flatten it all together, and it's not the end of the world. Um, so some people do want to do that. It doesn't matter. You don't have to do that. But I've gotten that question enough times to where I feel like I should show it to you now, as opposed to answering it individually, because I'll just end up answering it in individually for 10 of you anyway. So yeah. How do you connect it? Where does it connect? You put the two points. You're right. So this, th this is that's a great question. Fundamentally, this is a separate curve from this. And so they're not actually connected. They're just on top of each other. 
So I can take this point on this side, for example, and I can move it over until it rides on top of this particular curve. If you're struggling to make it, let's let me come back here. Let's say I was making that curve again. If you get it close on either side, like that, you can always come back in and select one of these points with the direct select, drag it over, and drag it over. So let me take this, and I want to switch it back to end there. And I'm going to leave this as a sharp top. What if it's that line that goes both directions? OK, so we're going to get to that. What that has to do is, is doing curving. So everything I've done so far has been single clicks. So I have pen tool, and I'm creating single clicks to create each of these line segments. Now as we move on to the next character, I'm going to run down over here to the B. I'm just holding down spacebar as I'm doing this. And I'm making this big so I can really see it. Obviously, when I zoom out, these, these characters get a little bit smaller. Now, when I create the B, there's some lines that are straight. So for example, the back of the B is going to be straight. And I'll go from here, and I want to come down to the bottom. Notice that I kind of get a natural snap with that green line as a guide to, to know that it's perfect. I could also hold down the Shift key if I wanted to make sure that it was perfectly in line. But as long as I have those green guides, I'd be fine. So I've created this line that goes straight down. I'm going to click on my black arrow, click off so nothing's selected, and come back to my pen tool. And the reason I'm doing this is I'm going to come back to the top and start from that existing point. So right now, you asked about that asterisk next to the, the pen tool. When I move the pen tool over the top of this line, the asterisk changes to a little line. That means I'm going to continue from a particular point as I, as I, as I go. So I'll, when that little line is there, I'll click. Now I'm continuing on with this letter. So I'm going to draw a straight line across the top before I get into my curve. So I'll come over here, eh, we'll say to about there, and I'll make a single click. So now my line comes up, and it goes over to there. The next piece of this is now curved. So I haven't done a curved line segment. I could, I could create a font that had you know, this sort of a look. But I really would like that to be curved. So instead of doing a single click at this point, I'm going to pick a point that's about halfway through the arc. So if I imagine this arc coming down to right about there, I'll pick a point about halfway, yeah, right about there. And instead of single clicking, I'm going to click and then hold, and I'm going to drag out a tangency line. So this line represents the tangent line of the curve. The longer I drag it, the longer the tangent becomes. The shorter it is, the, the less steep the curve becomes, if that makes sense. So I'm probably going to need this to be out just at about, we'll say there. Sometimes if you hold down Shift, it helps because it keeps it straight up and down. And so I'm going to go to right about there. And that then creates this first half of the arc. At this point, when I create the second half of the arc, I only need to make a single click to finish this part of the arc. So I'm not going to continue holding that uh, or clicking and holding. It's just one curve here that clicks and holds. And then I'll come back oops, to that point. So there was an example where I wanted this to come back across, and it ended up creating another control point for me there. So let me come back to that point and see if we can get it close. There we go. In which case, I'll use the direct select there, and I'll move this over until it intersects. So I've created that first part of the loop. Now, it's unlikely for you guys on the first try that your top of your B is going to look perfect. Chances are it's not going to be quite right. But if I use that direct select, the white arrow, I can come back and select that point right here in the middle. I get my tangency line back. And I can make adjustments. I could say, you know what, I needed that to be a little bit, a little bit taller there, or I needed it to be a little bit shorter there. I needed to move this you know, out or in. So for example, I can move it out just a little bit and control it. So you have, I have some flexibility in how that point moves and adjusts. And the more you practice, the easier it's going to become to do this. This is why it takes practice. So I've drawn this part of the B. I'm going to come back to the line tool, or the pen tool, and I'm going to start at the bottom 
I'm going to come out straight to about there. I'm going to click and hold at the halfway point. Click and hold. Drag my tangency line out. I'll hold down Shift to make sure it's nice and proportional here. And then I'm going to come back and single click as I get to there. Now this time it didn't turn out quite as good. I'm not as happy with it. So it's going to take some adjustment. I'll use my white arrow or my direct select tool. I'll move this one so that that lines up there. I'm going to move this piece down just a little bit more. I'm going to drop this up a little bit more like that. Let's pull this one back just a little bit more. And now I'm starting to feel like, OK, that looks more like what I want it to look like. And if I were to zoom out, Control minus zooms out, and we can see that, OK, there's the B that I created. Let me zoom back in. Control plus zooms back in. And now we'll move on to the next letter. So again, pen tool takes practice. So when I go to create the C, I could use the pen tool, in which case I would start with a single click. And you really want to minimize the number of control points that you have along the way. So I'll do one at the top, about like that. One about halfway down this back side, like that. One at the bottom here, and then one you know, right about there. And I created the C. It's not that attractive. I could finesse it a little bit. I could go in to the, uh, the pen tool here. I could make some adjustments. I could adjust the curvature here. I could have that come down a little bit more, et cetera. But it's still just not quite there. And no matter how much you try, it's pretty hard to create a perfect symmetrical C. So instead of doing it that way, I'm actually going to do it using one of the shape tools. So instead of a rectangle, I'm going to use the ellipse tool. And the ellipse tool will allow me to create an ellipse that's symmetrical on all sides. So I'll start up here in the upper left corner, and I'll come down here to the right corner until I like my shape, something like that. Much more symmetrical, wouldn't you say? Better than I can do with my pen tool. But I still need to cut out that, that center section of the C to make it look right. So if I were to come in here and use the Direct Select tool and select this one point and press the Delete key, I could get half the C. But that's not quite right either. So what I need to do is I need to create a control point along this curve right at about there and another one right at about here that will represent the two places that I want the line to be broken. And so I'll come over to my pen tool. And instead of just selecting the pen tool itself, I'm going to click and hold on the pen tool. And see there's an Add Anchor Point tool. And I apologize. I've been calling them control points because that's what they're called in Rhino. It's, in Illustrator, it's called an anchor point. Same thing. So I'll click on the Add Anchor Point tool. And when I click over here, you see that now I have a new point with a new tangent line that's just on top of my curve. I'll do the same thing down here. New point, new tangent line. And then I want to get rid of the segment over here. So to get rid of that segment, I'll use the Direct Select tool. I'll select the point that's halfway through, select that point there, and I'll press the Delete key. And that then clips it to the C. Now that's a lot better as a C than I could do if I just did it with the Pen tool. So, like S's, right? so S's, however, you're probably going to have to do. And that's, that's like your challenge. S is probably the hardest thing you'll do over the next two course days. So. We'll get to that. I'm going to skip that for right now. Continue on with the D. Come back to the pen tool here. I'll do a straight line from top down to the bottom. And in this case, I'm going to go back. I'll click off. I'll come back to the pen tool so I can start again at the top. I'm going to come to the halfway point. Remember, you don't want too many, too many control points. So we'll come out here to about where I want the halfway point to be. I'll click, and I'll hold, and I'll drag. And I'll create that first half of the D. I'll come back to the end point. Now, the asterisk, when I get to this end point, notice it changes to a circle. That circle represents that I'm actually closing the shape. So in this case, I'm finishing the shape by closing it. So I'll click, and it makes the second half of the D there. Now in this one, maybe I need to make a few more adjustments here. Maybe I'll make these a little bit taller. Make this one just a little bit broader there. Maybe something like that. I don't know. You can play around with getting the proportions just right. E should be very easy. Right? It's a few straight line segments. 
there to right there. We'll come out here to that point. We'll come back and we'll draw the top of the E. And then maybe we'll draw one more piece of the E, something like that. And again, you can come up with what you want the font to look like. You can decide on various things. I'm going to skip the F because it's essentially the same thing as the, G, as the uh, E. We'll get to the G. In this one, I would use that circle again, or the ellipse tool. Go ahead and create the ellipse first. Once again, I'll come in and I'll add an anchor point at the top, out there. And I'm also going to add an anchor point down here at the bottom where I want the, the line that goes horizontally to come off of the G. Once I have those two anchor points, I'm going to click the direct select and select the one point in between them right there. If, by the way, it doesn't have a point in between, you create a third anchor point, and then you can delete that line segment. There it is. And we'll add one more line segment from right there. Oops, let me make sure that it's straight. Like that. And I've now made that part of the G. H is pretty easy. I is obviously pretty easy. A lot of these start to be a little bit easier. We'll move on. When we get to the S, I told you you might want to skip it for today as you, as you gain practice. But S is really hard. There's no doubt about it. So if I was starting with the S, right, I'd start about there. We come up to the top to start that S. Next point, I'm going to do right about there. Next point, I'm going to do right about here. Last point is about there. And the ending point is maybe there. Okay, So everything was pretty good until I got to the end point. That didn't work out so well. So I need to make a few more adjustments on that end point, shrink it down a little bit like that, maybe a little bit to this one to control how that comes in. Yeah, there you go, something like that. This looked like it got a little bit long and unwieldy. Let's shorten that one up. This one might need to get a little bit higher, et cetera. The S is going to take time. I've been doing this for many years. So I can make the S look easy with just a few clicks. It will take you a while. Remember, you can always go back and do it. One of the keys, though, is not to have too many points. If you did the S, I'll do a second S over here, and you had a point, you know, I'll put a point there, and I'll put a point here, and then I'll put a point there, and then I'll put a point here, and then I'll put a point here, and I'll put another point there, and I'll put another point there. It's always a little bit bent, if that makes sense. So fewer points is generally better. You can, by the way, go back to the delete anchor point tool, and you can get rid of anchor points. If you feel like you had too many, you can get rid of them, and that might help you. Remember, you can get a lot by just adjusting the tangency lines. So I have one point, and it's starting to get a lot smoother just by adjusting that one tangency line. Same thing here. We'll adjust that out. That tail is just really ugly because it's too long. But you can start to smooth this curve out. This one might need to get a little bit deeper. So you, the other option would be to take an ellipse. All right, let me move over here. And you could do an ellipse here. And you could do a second ellipse below it. So we'll say something like that. The key here is figuring out how and where to clip it. So I would go in and say, let's add the anchor point right at about here. And I'm going to get rid of the line segment that goes from this point all the way around to that point. And I'll do that by selecting this one point right there. I'll press the Delete key. So I've got that half, OK. Same thing on this side. I pick the end point, go to right there. I'll select this point, and I'll press Delete. And so I've gotten close to the same shape. But notice when I look at these two that there's a little gap in between those. I want those two to come together and join. So I can take one of the points and drag it over to the other point, and now they've come together. If I wanted these two to actually join, 
I would need to select both points. So there's both points. And I can come up here to this option under anchors, and I could say connect selected endpoints. So I have two endpoints selected, connect those two together, and they should then become one endpoint, not two, that represents the whole path. So I found a way to connect those two pieces together. You can also do that if you have two lines in space. So I have that line, and I have that line. The ends are close to each other. I could select both endpoints, and I could say connect those two in space. And it will create that line in between them. The other thing is I can convert any point. So right now this is angular, that point. If I wanted it to be smooth, I can come up here to convert to smooth, and that point is going to turn into a smooth point. That point is going to turn into a smooth point with tangency lines. So you can go from angles to smooth. You can also go from smooth. Let me get rid of one of these points here. Sorry, we don't need two. We'll just keep one here. We can go from smooth, if I select this point, to angled. It's going to go back to angled. So we have that flexibility as well as you're, as you're creating these letters. Let me go ahead and delete that. OK, so the other thing that can happen, and we've worked on this already a bit. So I'm going to use the S as my example here. And that is that it has a, just a standard width to it. I can increase the width of the stroke. And we can get up to, say, 9 point or whatever until it looks reasonable. But sometimes you want to take it a little bit further. And so there's a couple things that we can do to take it uh, a bit further. One is to apply brushes, but I'm not going to talk about brushes until a little bit later in the course. But if you feel comfortable and you want to do that, you can. It's not off limits. I would instead, however, encourage you to play with something called the width tool, which is available here. If you don't see it, it could have one of the other tools showing. But chances are it's the, it's, it is, in fact, the width tool. Uh, it looks kind of like a little, uh, I don't know, a banana slug with somebody riding on top of it. I don't know. I don't know how to describe that icon. Okay, But it's the width tool. And what the width tool allows us to do is it allows us to customize at any point how wide our curve is. So for example, I could fatten up this part of the S, and I could thin down that part of the S, and I could thin down this part of the S and kind of stylize what's happening as part, of, uh, as part of this. There are also profiles. So if I have, I'll move over to this S. If I had this selected, I could come down here, and at the bottom, I could go to Profile, and I could pick one of the profiles that they already have assigned. So something like that, thicker, thinner, and then thicker again. I could do something that goes from thin to thick to thin. I could go to something that is thicker in one direction versus the other, et cetera. So you can play with those, but you can also manually go in and make those adjustments to the, the individual pieces using that width tool. So that's available to you. So the purpose today is, again, to practice with your pen tool. If you could get through the, at least all of the capital letters, that would be good. Um, we have this, obviously you know we're going for capital letters, lowercase letters, numbers, and a few symbols. And you can see how they're laid out here. Uh, the next page, if we were to turn off, I'll go to layers, I'll turn off font page one, I'll turn off page one, I'll turn on page two, turn on font page two, and you can see that we go through the last couple capital letters and then through the lowercase letters here. So you're going to be doing this page two. It's a little bit shorter than the first page. Does that make sense? Yeah? OK, so really today is about practice more than anything else. It's getting comfortable with the pen tool, feeling comfortable with the pen tool. Uh, if you run into snags or something's not working correctly, let me know, and I'll try to walk you through it. It just takes practice. But this is something that you're going to use very frequently as you go forward. So you really need to be comfortable with it, because when we get into architectural diagramming, you'll use it. You, let's say you're in the Rhino class. You'll do exports from Rhino. You'll bring it into Illustrator. You'll make some adjustments. You need this skill. You need to be able to work with the pen tool. But you can also use the same pen tool in, in, uh, in um, InDesign. 
setting up those custom shapes to place images in, that sort of thing. You can also use the same pen tool in Photoshop. We didn't even touch on the pen tool in Photoshop, but the pen tool is still there. So if you get comfortable with it, you can do a lot with it. So now's the time to practice, uh, and we'll go from there. Are there any questions? No? All right.